Welcome back everyone. Today we're looking at import range and although it may sound like uh, an interesting function name, its applications are very practical and very useful. In order to do an import range, I need to create a new document. So I'm going to do that right now. And we're going to create a new spreadsheet. And then we're going to name that spreadsheet something along the lines of like master list. That's why I like to call it, but you can choose any name that you like. Uh, I'm going to split my screen to make it a little bit easier to follow. Uh, if you can't do that on your end, just try to uh, make sure you're always working on the right document to prevent formulas from breaking down the road. Um, the point of an import range is to link two documents together. And that is very useful for multiple reasons. Um, in the first example, uh, I'm going to want to have my chart of accounts on the separate document. And the reason is because with my crew list here, I may be you know, making copies for the different shows that I'm working on. And if I change my chart of accounts in one of the crew lists, ideally, it should also be changed in the other crew list because otherwise, I'm going to have to do the same thing twice. So let's start with that one. Uh, currently, my chart of account lives in my crew list on the tab. I'm going to go ahead and copy everything that's in column A, and I'm going to paste that on my uh, master list here. So let's just expand this a little bit and we're going to delete the columns to the right side. So if we forgot how that works, just hold Command, Shift and the right arrow. That's going to select everything to the right. Oops, I think I clicked on the arrow here instead of the header. Here we go. Um, and then we are going to delete everything that's in our crew list. Boom. So. Now that I've deleted this, if I go back to my crew list, I see that all my positions are broken and everything is considered to be invalid. So let's bring that back. To bring this back, we're going to use the import range. So let's start typing it. Import, and we see there's quite a few, but we want the one that's all the way at the bottom for us. And let's look at what it wants. It wants a spreadsheet URL and it wants a range. But there's kind of a, a tricky syntax to remember. Uh, you got to open your URL with a quotation mark and close it with a quotation mark as well. And then put a comma. And then for your range, it's the name of your sheet and followed by the range. And that is also it to be in between quotation marks. All right. So let's build it little by little. The first thing we want is a quotation mark. And then we're going to go and grab the URL of our spreadsheet that contains our chart of accounts now. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it into my formula. And it shows in green because I've opened quotation marks. I'm going to close that as well. Uh, now I'm going to put a comma. And next, I need to specify which sheet and which range I want to be working with. So usually when we do that, we can just like click on the cell and it tells us like, well, this is a 12. So, you know, either I can just write the whole range by hand, but there's potential for me to make a bunch of errors. Or what I can do is I'm just going to switch documents and I'm going to, first I'm going to rename this and call it a chart of accounts. All right, let's go with COA because this will be easier to type later on. Uh, I'm going to make another sheet and I'm just going to type equal and then go back to my chart of accounts and select the whole column. And what it gives me in the formula bar is the range that I need to import to the left side. So I'm just going to copy this with that the equal sign in the, in the front. All right, I'm just going back there. And in my crew list on the import range, I'm going to open quotation marks again, and then I'm going to paste my range. So you see there's the name of the sheet, then exclamation mark, and then my range. And I'm going to close my quotation mark and close my parentheses finally. So I hit enter, and it's going to give me an error. But that's normal. 
when you put your mouse over the error, it will tell you you need to connect these sheets. Just like any Google Sheet document, you need to grant access from one document to the other. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say allow access and voila. It is importing the range that is specified on the sheet in the other document. So that now, if let's say I add uh, additional labor, Oops. I'm going to give it a few seconds. And we see it pop up on the left side. So now I can have one place for my chart of accounts. And no matter how many copies of my crew list I make, it will always be updated to the latest position that I've added or removed from the chart of accounts. So that's really handy because then we won't have to like make the change every time uh, we have a new crew list. All right, so that was the first the first try. And by the way, now that I have something back in here, then if I go back to my crew list, I also have my, my titles back in there. Uh, the second thing I like to do is I want to be able to retrieve freelancers as easily as I can retrieve positions. And, you know, uh, depending on how you work, I mean, most likely you have a list of freelancers that you, you work with pretty frequently. So let's make a new tab on our crew list. And we're going to call that a uh, roster. But you could call it anything you want. And in there, um, I want to import a roster. But same thing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want that roster to be independent so that if I'm adding people to it, it feeds into all of my crew list. So same thing on my master list. I'm going to make a tab also called roster. And in there, I'm going to go and uh, paste some uh, information. So you can do the same thing on your end. Uh, just again, name, phone, email. And you know you can format this any way you want. Uh, I'm not going to do it now just to keep, to keep moving. I'm just going to delete the columns to the right side. So these are all my people. And actually, we have one more that we haven't worked in worked with yet, which is the latest edition. And now back to my crew list, I'm going to start typing my import range. So, so on my crew list, I'm going to start typing uh, my import range. So here we go. First thing we want to do is open the quotation marks. Then I want to go grab the URL of my document. I want to come back here and paste it, close the quotation marks, Put a comma and this time I'm just going to type it directly. So I open the quotation marks again and the name of my tab on my master list is roster. I'm going to put an exclamation mark and then I'm going to specify the range that I want. The range is going to be from, it's going to be column A through C. Actually it's everything in there. So A, C, close the quotation marks, close parentheses, and because I've already linked the spreadsheets, then I don't need to, to allow the access here. It just does it on its own. So same thing. Let's clean it up a little bit. And I'm going to leave room below. I have a thousand rows roughly below on each side. I'm going to leave that. So I can keep going as long as I want and just keep adding freelancers and it will never break unless I get over a thousand. And at that point, you'll just need to add rows. But you've probably got time for that. So... Uh, the next thing is, now that I have that handy in there, why don't we reuse what we learned earlier with a VLOOKUP and with data validation to create a system that allows us to retrieve our freelancer's phone number and email uh, if they're in our roster. So let's do that. I'm going to add a row at the bottom. And actually, let's delete the one we had left blank earlier. I'm going to add a row right here, and uh, I'm going to say, well, I want my, my crane operator. That's the last one that I added. And then here, first, I need, uh, I need to be able to pull names from my roster. So to do that, data validation. Let's go to our roster tab on the crew list. So we'll select column A, and then we'll go to data name ranges. 
Now, I selected column A because it makes it easier to select the whole thing, but ideally we want to exclude the very first row, which just says name. So we're going to start on A2, and we're going to go all the way to the bottom, and this we're going to call something like crew names. All right. And then, so let's go back to the crew list. So now, if I select column B, go to data, validation, I can just say list from a range, and then I can type crew names. So I have a drop down that lets me choose from all my freelancers in my roster. So here we want Kelly. And next, I want to write formulas that are going to retrieve the phone number and the email for Kelly. So to do that, we're going to need a VLOOKUP. Uh, and we know that for the VLOOKUP, we're going to need the, the search key, that's going to be Kelly, and then we're going to need to search through a range, and that range is going to be our roster. We're going to need to say, like, hey, look through this whole list here with the three columns and either return the phone number or return the email. So because we're going to need a range and we want to make things as clean as possible, let's go ahead and select our three columns. Let's go to Data, Name Ranges, and let's name that uh, roster. Up, and here I, I can have the header, it's not a problem for this. All right. So going back to my crew list, and actually we don't need really our, our master list anymore, so I'm gonna hide that, give us a little bit of room to work. Uh, let's start with the email because all my phone numbers are identical, so it's not gonna be easy to see if we're doing things right or not. Instead, I'm going to retrieve the email. So, equal VLOOKUP, and we'll open the parentheses. Let's click the little uh, question mark to display our pop-up menu here to see what I need. So I need a search key. Search key is gonna be the freelancer. Then put a comma, then I need a range. So I'm gonna search the whole roster, the three columns. So I just type roster. And then I need to specify the index. The index was the column where the information is located. So my roster was the same thing that I have here. It's name, phone, email, so column one, two, three. So I'm gonna put a three. And then finally, I'm gonna write false because I'm not working with an ordered list. I hit enter, and here we go. Kelly's email is right here. And I can just now drag this up. This way it works for everyone. Unfortunately, if I remove Pam, well, we have a little error. We'll have to fix that after that. But if I go back and find Pam in there, her email comes back. And that's going to save us a lot of time. Before we go and fix the error, let's uh, just copy our formula here. And then we're going to put it in the phone column. But this time, instead of returning the third column, which has the emails, we want to return the second column. And I get the phone number and I can also drag this up here. Um, so how do we go about fixing this error where, you know, when there's no term here, we get, we get an error message? Well, you have two solutions. Either you can use an if statement that's going to look if there's something in, in column B before it does the formula, or because we can solve this with the if error, let's go ahead and use the if error. It's even faster. So I'm going to click in there, and in front of my formula, I'm going to type if error, open the parentheses, and although you do need to close it at the end, uh, Google Sheet will do that for you. So just hit enter, and here you go. It's, it's wrapping now the formula in an if error, and it's preventing the message from showing up. So let's do the same thing here. And now I can drag these two cells up, and here we go. I can just find Kelly, and her phone number and her email will appear automatically, saving me a good amount of time there. So final consideration for the import range. Um, let's go into our formula. I see that I have a whole URL for the document. We actually don't need this whole thing. Um, I personally find that handy to have the whole URL, because then I can just copy and paste it and go and look that up. But really, the only part that we need are what's in between 
um, this to uh, forward slash. That's that's a URL of your Google Sheet. And if I remove everything else, um, it's still possible to retrieve the range that way. Um, the other thing worth mentioning is you can use name ranges here instead of a, um, a regular range. You'll still need the name of the sheet you're working on, but you can create a name range on the other document and then enter it there. And finally, you can also replace the URL with a cell reference. And for that, you don't need the quotation marks. You would just say, hey, my URL is in C18. So here it's going to break the formula. But if I have, if I had the URL of my document in C18, then it would pull it into the, the formula and, uh, and retrieve the content for us. So it's very dynamic. It's very useful. And when we're making templates like this, where we want information to be fed in, no matter how many copies of documents we create, it is very, very useful. So in the next lesson, we'll look at uh, range protection to prevent people from breaking more formulas. And we'll also look at array formulas, which are a little bit complicated. We're going to allow us to clean up our documents so that we don't have formulas in every single row, but instead we just have one formula that calculates an entire column.